sorry, Gary. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Gary Everett. He's the chief engineer for the 10th generation Honda Civic, which is a very special car for many reasons. One of them being that uh, for the first time ever, I understand the U.S. team led the design of this car for the whole world, right? Correct. That's true. We we led the uh, platform, meaning the chassis and the body and the interior. Um, Japan st uh, did the powertrain. They did the, the turbo engine and the and the naturally aspirated engine. Excellent. So let's go for a little spin and okay. talk about it. Uh, we're here in California near LA with the Mulholland Canyons here, which is a pretty cool place to test drive this car. So as you said, you led the team that designed mm -hmm. this car. Uh, sure. The engine came from Japan, but let's talk about let's talk about that first. I mean, uh -huh. 10 generation Civic, uh, and this is the sedan with yep. the first variation of this car, right? Correct. Yes. So what are we going to have in the in the future? I mean, this is the sedan, but what's what's coming up uh, to complete the new family? Um, in the future, we're going to have a, a two door. Also, uh, America will be introducing a five door again, which we haven't had for quite a while. I know. And then also there will be future sports variations such as SI and even Type R. So this means one of the most popular compact cars and I said compact like with a little bit of hesitation because this is a, it's not a compact car in my opinion I mean it's like so big and in and out yeah we think that, that this is what the customer wants I mean we kind of went back to the civic roots of making it sporty so we we focus very much on the dynamics but also we wanted to win in the packaging so uh, we increased the package volume significantly so we're best in class for packaging also and even the, the rear seats are also, you have really good room in the rear seats and the front seats. So, um, when you started to plan for this car, you didn't like wanted to make it like another compact US car or what the, the customers are used to here in the US, but you went ahead and like benchmark it against something much higher in this higher segment, actually the luxury segment like BMWs and Audis, right? That's correct. Um, as a team, we went to Europe and we drove the best cars in this. In, Around the world, they don't think of it as compact and luxury cars. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. My, my yeah. reference about compact car. Right, right. So, you, so you have a C category car, B category, or or D category, something like that. So, um, we went to Europe and and drove what we thought were the best uh, C category cars in the world, and and uh, benchmarked those and understood those, measured those, tried to understand what makes uh, what makes them good and and where we wanted to approach, what kind of targets we wanted to set. So I think it was a great activity. We had our whole team from Japan and from America all went to Europe and did this together. So let's start with the engine. So there are like two different options for this uh, 10 generation, right? Yes. We have a, for the first time for, for Honda in America, uh, we are introducing a turbo engine into the Honda lineup. So Which is this one that we're yes. driving now. Yes. So this is a, a 1.5 liter turbo engine uh, um, with a CVT so it's a it's a great combination that uses the we can use the torque of the turbo uh, and match it up perfectly with our with our CVT Honda has a has a great unique ability because we we develop our in-house we develop our transmissions in-house and we develop our engines in-house so we have a really good opportunity to make those two match really well and have really good drivability and also even though we have best in class fuel economy our acceleration is also best in class so so we've won in both in both worlds with the with the turbo and this is the sedan which is not con i mean it's not what the sports version of it will be so correct, it's pretty correct. cool yes yes so uh, another question with the cvt a lot of people still don't like the idea of a cvt because the performance the first generation of those transmissions weren't that right. good but yes. uh, what has improved to make it like go with the turbo and like make it like really as a sports car well a couple a couple things that uh, we do I think we do really well one the probably one of the biggest things that we've done on this is just tuning the algorithms to make it feel more natural so you have a really good shift feel acceleration feel while you're driving and I think you'll probably attest to that that it feels it doesn't have that rubber band type of feel. exactly no there's no lag on at any point right yeah. and the other thing is we have the opportunity with the CVT and uh, 
and, and the torque converter to let the engine spool up a little bit before you use that torque. So of course, uh, with a turbo, when you're in the lower RPMs, the turbo hasn't kicked in yet. So we have the opportunity with our in-house CVT and torque converter development to really tune the engine, let it spool up a little bit, let the engine, let the let the torque kick in, and then uh, use all of that acceleration. So, so we're able through all of our technologies to make the drive uh, really natural and really strong. Also, yeah. yeah. For example, here we're starting almost from zero to zero miles an hour, and like it really kicks in fast. I mean, like the power is right there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There, we've uh, we've tuned out, you know, um, turbos. We've tuned out a lot of the the um, traditional issues that turbos have had in the past, and are just using the the goodness of the torque and the fuel economy and the power. So you get performance, but you also get efficiency up. Yeah, this car gets uh, 42 miles per gallon on the highway, which is which is fantastic. So. And then you have the second option for the for the engine, which is the two liter. Correct. Uh, Yes. Natural aspirated. That's a brand new engine, also. So yes, we have a brand new engine for the uh, for the two liter naturally aspirated, and uh, we we have that. So we have it's the first time that we've introduced two uh, brand new engines at, at a, a full model change. So yeah, um, yeah we're really we're, we're really proud of that, um, and it also gets great fuel economy too. So um, going to the other parts of the, of the car, so completely new platform, complete new body, complete mm -hmm. new interior, everything, right? Yes, yes. Basically, it's a it's a ground up, completely new vehicle. Uh, we started with the platform. We uh, completely re-engineered from scratch. Uh, one of the interesting things is that we wanted this vehicle to be sporty so we had the opportunity we lowered the hip point and I'm sure you kind of can feel in your driving position that it feels very sporty yeah, and another thing and is if you look out to go you can with this, so see the hood right? the team so do you what have this more best, sporty so, uh, premium uh, feel with a little bit the longer hood thinks it was and you have a lower the right decision, uh, sporty and we're driving really position so we re-engineered the, the whole outcome. vehicle yeah. around a sporty driving position we pushed the wheels out two inches shortened the overhangs to make it more aggressive, uh, better stance, um, increase the wheelbase to give more interior package. So even though we've made it lower and wider, we keep the head space. So we've just completely re-engineered everything to, to, to win in every area that we're focusing on packaging, uh, sporty driving, fuel economy, everything. So we're really proud of this vehicle. Then the interior, I mean, all the materials, wherever you touch, you, you feel like Good quality materials, no hard edges anywhere, like no hard plastics. Uh, the new screen and everything. I mean, like this car starts. The base car starts like around 18 and goes up to like 27, but it feels more than that, to be honest <laughs> with you. Yeah, we're uh, we're really proud of the 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 level of of features and quality that we were able to put into this car. So when I say that we went to Europe to, to benchmark the best in the world. It wasn't just driving dynamics, it was everything. It was understanding everything, understanding the, the premium quality materials, understanding the fit and finish and everything, understanding it, benchmarking it, and trying to make a vehicle that leapfrogged, uh, leapfrogged ahead. Yeah, so you're gonna put a lot of pressure on those uh, competitive brands, but also maybe <laughs> in Acura, because I mean, this feels like a really, really good car. Yeah, we're really proud of this vehicle. Acura has some great attributes too, If um, and we have some great product representatives that can talk about the, the attributes of Acura also. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Like, most people don't really uh, know how much work goes behind producing a car like this, and this is just an example, I guess, from a very long process, right? Like this, this job takes like what three, four years? Yeah, it takes a long time, and I've been on this, uh, I've been on this project uh, since since the beginning, basically. And uh, being a global team, for example, having the engine development in Japan and the frame development—we call it frame, interior, chassis, yeah. body. We call it the frame development in America means that you have to have a lot of communication. Also, one thing I'd like to explain is. The, the, when I say 
HRA or America developed the frame, that means the body and the chassis, but that body and chassis and interior is basically going to be used around the world in yeah, China a global car, and, yeah. and Asia and Europe. And so that we didn't develop some of those other region vehicles, we did just North America. So we, uh, Japan did some of the other regions, say for example China. So we had to have very good communication with Japan all the time. If it's a matter of the engine or a matter of the interior, we had to make sure that everybody was in an agreement moving forward. So it was a lot of, uh, <laughs> there's only two times that you can communicate with Japan when they're off by 12 hours, <laughs> exactly. 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. <laughs> so you have video conferences uh, in the morning at 7 a.m. and another one at 7 p.m. So it makes for very long so days. So very long days, li very yes. little sleep. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> yeah, you had to squeeze it in when you could. That's amazing. Well, another thing is that, uh, I mean, that it's really amazing that you can put in this entry-level car I mean, like this thing about the camera. What's the the official name? The lane uh, uh, lane watch camera. Lane watch camera, which yeah. uh, debuted, I believe, in the Accord. Yes. Uh, it, this is an amazing feature. I'm putting down in a car that is like so affordable. It's like pretty amazing. So how how does that work? I mean, how that technology prices have like allowed you to do that, or what? What is it? Well, I think that's. Um it's not specifically the Civic team, but it's Honda uh, overall. So, so the resources thing, of the whole company. Yeah, yeah, one example is the lane watch camera. Another example that we're quite proud of is the uh, electronic parking brake that you usually won't see in a vehicle of this class. And what we did is we went and worked together with the supplier and said, we're going to have huge volume. So with economy of scale, we want to drive down the price and put it into our Civic. So uh, strategically, as Honda, we're going out and working with these suppliers to make, uh, to make these features, to be able to bring these features down into something like this Civic. So you have such a great feature set. Uh, well, uh, really good job on that. And uh, again, like everything you can see and, and touch really feels like high quality. I mean, uh, you didn't cut any corners in, in terms of materials and all that. And it's pretty amazing that uh, you can produce this car and uh, still make money on it. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, honestly, with a Civic, with a car like a Civic, you know, it's um, it's critical for the Honda as a business. So you have to have that balance between you know between what you want to apply in the vehicle. But I think this team was very passionate to make the 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 level of the vehicle is the most important thing. The marketability, the level of the vehicle is number one, and we're not going to sacrifice that no matter what. Well, Gary, thank you very much for your time again. A uh, really beautiful drive here in the Mulholland Canyons and in near LA. And a uh, fabulous, fabulous drive. Great car. Well, thank you very much, Javier. Thank you very much.